Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about SSL or TLS. So how does SSL or TLS work? So what is SSL or TLS? SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. These protocols helps us encrypt traffic in a network. That way, the third party won't be able to see what's being sent over the network. I will explain how it works in a moment. But before that, we need to clarify something. That is, what is the difference between SSL, TLS and HTTPS? First, let's talk about HTTPS. We all know what HTTPS is. HTTPS is the secure version of the protocol HTTP. And HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is the protocol that we use almost everywhere, especially when it comes to websites. That is, HTTPS equals HTTP with SSL. So there is nothing complicated there. I'll explain in detail in a minute, but let's move on to the next difference. That is TLS versus SSL. Now this is the one that's confusing to a lot of people. There is nothing to be confused about here. TLS just means a newer version of SSL. So at first there was SSL version 2.0. So you might be thinking, what about 1.0? But SSL 1.0 was never released publicly. After 2.0, there was 3.0. And after 3.0, they just stopped using the name SSL and started using the term TLS, which stands for Transport Layer Security. So TLS 1.0 is more like SSL version 4. So after 1.0, there was 1.1, 1.2, and I think the latest version is 1.3. All right, so what exactly is wrong with HTTP? Let's say for example, this is you with your computer and uh, you're in a coffee shop connected to a Wi-Fi network. And uh, this is your bank's website and you are connecting to your bank using HTTP. The problem with HTTP is everything that you sent from your computer to the server is sent as a plain text. What does plain text means? It means anybody looking at the packets will be actually able to read these packets in English and uh, make out whatever you are being sent. That means stuff like your username and password is actually being sent over the network in plain text. Let's take a look at these packets. So I'm gonna go ahead and open login.demo.esc.sh and uh, let's say this is our bank's login. Before we type in our username and password, I'm gonna open Wireshark. Now, if you are not familiar with Wireshark, it's a tool that helps us in analyzing network packets. You can download it from, you can download it from wireshark.org. So I have Wireshark opened. So now we want to have Wireshark listen on a network interface to see all the packets. So first you have to choose the network interface. So in my case, I know that it is my Wi-Fi network. So it's this one, so I just double click and uh, and you can see, you know, all the traffic that's being have, uh, you know, that's being passed from my system at this point. So I'm just gonna stop it. And uh, we don't want to see all of that. We just need to see the single website, which is this one. So we need to figure out the IP address of this one first. We can use the dig command. All right, so this is the IP address. Now we can add a filter in Wireshark using ip.addr equals the IP address. Now it will only show the packets that corresponds to this IP address. Let's start capturing again. Continue without saving. So if I open it again, you can see all the packets that it just received. You can see the get request here. You can actually see the contents of that request here, the, the headers and everything. Let's go ahead and log in. All right. Here you can see that it made a post request to slash index.php. So if I double click on that one, you can see that, you know, it detected that there was an HTML form and uh, if you click on that, you can see the username and the password in clear, plain text. So now this is not good. So anybody in this network will be able to see all of these username and passwords. So to prevent that, we use SSL. Let's go ahead and log into the HTTPS version of the same website. So now you can see that it has a padlock saying connection secure. And if I log in now, 
and if we take a look at Wireshark again, uh, you, you know, you can see that all of the stuff that we sent to the web server and whatever the web server sent back, everything is encrypted. It's all garbage, useless to us. And that is the whole purpose of using SSL or TLS. Well, that's not the whole purpose, but that's one purpose. So I'm just going to go ahead and close Wireshark. So now that we are on the topic of packet sniffing using Wireshark, I want to introduce another tool called uh, TCP dump. You can do the same thing using TCP dump. So you can do sudo TCP dump dash i for interfaces and dash a and uh, then the IP address. No, sorry, host. And uh, since this is the WSL thing, it won't be able to capture the traffic that's happening on the browser. It should work fine if you are on a Linux system. But uh, since I'm not, I'm just gonna make a curl request. So basically it's the same page that we just, you know, tried out. But instead of actually logging in from the UI, I'm gonna make a curl request. You know, the passing the username and password here. This is HTTP, not secure version. So if I do this, here you can see the whole thing, including the response in the HTML and uh, the username and password. So what happens when we do the same, but with HTTPS? Well, you know, everything is garbage. That's how SSL or TLS protects us. Even though encrypting the packets or encrypting the data is one of the major feature of TLS, that's not the only one. Okay, sure, first one is encryption so that other people can't see what we are talking to the server. Another one is authentication. You see, we want to know the website that we are connecting to is the right one. See, back to the uh, example of your bank's website, even if you were actually using HTTPS, but you were sending it to the wrong server, then whoever controls the server will be able to see your username and password, right? So it's not enough that we encrypt the data, but we also need to make sure that whatever server we are connecting to is who they claim to be. Finally, integrity. Let's consider another scenario. This is you and uh, you are talking to your crush, let's say, over Facebook for whatever reason. But let's say that you have, you know, an admin or a, a network administrator. Let's say you're doing this from your college network. So whoever is in control of the network can actually see the packets going through it. But since it's encrypted, they cannot see what's actually inside of it. But they will still be able to modify the packets. So if you send the message, I like you, then TLS need to make sure that this is the same message that's being received at this end. And for whatever reason, if they decide to, uh, you know, reply, I know this is a hypothetical situation, so that could happen. Then this guy should not be able to alter that message, you know, to whatever evil motive they have. So TLS needs to make sure that this data is not tampered in transit both ways. So that's what integrity means. So before we talk about how exactly it is achieved, we need to talk about a few terms. Encryption, you know this one. It's basically converting a human readable plain text into something like we just saw before. So encryption makes sure that only the sender and the recipient knows what exactly is the content of the data. So there are two types of encryption. Symmetric and asymmetric. Symmetric means both the encryption and the decryption is done using the same key. So symmetric has a single key and asymmetric has two keys. So if you encrypt it with one key, then you can decrypt it using the other key and vice versa. So this is also called as public key encryption. You know, this is same that we use for SSH. You know, SSH has a private key and a public key. So it's the same here. All right. So the next term is ciphers. So these are algorithms that is used to encrypt the data. So the next one is certificate. So this is a text file that contains a lot of information like the identity of the server, uh, the owner details, expiry, CA information, etc. I'll talk about what CA is in a moment. So in an Nginx configuration, you know, you will have it something like this. This is what the certificate is and it looks like this. We can actually see the certificate using our browser itself. So for example, in this case, we can click on this lock icon and I click here. And uh, if I click here, you can see the information about certificate. Uh, view certificate, uh, common name, this is the name of the website and uh, the issuer, you know, it's a less encrypted certificate. 
and the validity of the certificate and things like the public key and uh, it has a lot of information uh, so in chrome you can do the same uh, by clicking on this lock icon and then clicking on certificate also you can right click inspect element and go into the security and view the certificate as well so here you can see that it says the expiry of the certificate so this is how the web browser understands that the certificate is valid to whether to trust it or not so who issues these certificates so they are called uh, cs or certificate authorities so a simplified version of how this works is you approach a certificate authority and say i want an ssl certificate for my website and uh, they will ask you to prove that you are the owner of that website and once you have proved that they will issue a certificate so this is a hugely simplified and not so accurate explanation but that is how it works in theory so in the old days we had to buy a certificate we had to pay for them but now we can easily get a certificate for free using let's encrypt so let's encrypt is an awesome non-profit certificate authority their goal is to make sure that the whole internet is encrypted we will be talking about let's encrypt and you know how to get a free certificate in the next videos but uh, for now let's just get back to our video so as i said these certificate authorities issue the certificate right so what's so special about these certificate authorities the thing is uh, they are trusted by all the web browsers out there that is for example in firefox if i go into privacy and security and uh, come under these certificates and click on certificates you can see that there is like a lot of certificate authorities in here so the browsers are bundled with these ca certificates so the browser will look at any certificate that is shown by the web server and it will look at the ca that is issued this certificate so if it trusts that then it will trust that website all right so the next one is private key so this is the other half of the uh, public key or the certificate itself so whatever we encrypt using the public key which is present in the certificate remember the certificate does have a lot of information including the public key so what are we encrypt using the public key can be decrypted using the private key and vice versa so the private key looks something like this you know begin private key actually this is not the private key i just copied the certificate itself because you know obviously it's not a good idea to post the private key what if you wanted to create certificates on your own well you can they are called self-signed certificates so for example you can create your own ca certificate and add it to your own browser and uh, then whatever certificate that you create based on this ca certificate will be trusted on that browser but the thing is that it will only work on that browser it will not work on another browser or another device that you don't have the certificate installed i'll talk about self-signed certificate in a future video because this is very useful when we are dealing with development websites and things like that all right so let's talk about how exactly the SSL or TLS work. All right, so let's say we have the client here and the server on the right side. Uh, the SSL connection is initiated obviously from the client side. The client sends a hello packet. So that contains the supported ciphers. Ciphers means the you know encryption algorithms supported by the client and then all the TLS versions that it supports and then another random string called client random. Upon receiving this client hello, the server looks at all the ciphers that you know the client sent and then it chooses the best cipher, the one that the server and the client supports. Also the server chooses the, the highest TLS version the client supports and uh, you know the server sends all this information back to the client. That is the chosen cipher suite, uh, the server certificate and another random string called uh, server random. So at this point the client which is our browser has received the certificate. So it verifies this year you now the expiry and things like that by looking at the certificate and once it sees that it's all good it creates another random string and it encrypts it using the public key so where did we get the public key from because the server sent the certificate back to the client which includes the private uh, public key also so the client takes that public key it creates another random string and encrypts that string using this public key and send it back to the server so here we have a client random which we sent over plain text remember encryption hasn't started anywhere yet the client sent this client random in plain text and the server sent the server random in plain text but from here pre-master secret which is another string is encrypted using the public key of the server 
So that means only the client and the server will be able to see what exactly is the pre-master secret. The server will decrypt the you know, key using the private key that is present on the server. And at this point, the client and the server will generate the session keys. So the session keys are generated by combining the client random, the server random and the pre-master secret. So I have given this yellow line to indicate that uh, the pre-master secret is shared encrypted. Okay, so once the session keys are generated, client sends a message saying client ready and this time this is encrypted using the session key and the server also does the same thing. The important thing to note here is that both the client and the server have the same key, same session key which is used to encrypt and decrypt. That is, after this point, it is using symmetric key encryption to encrypt and decrypt the data. So whatever we send afterwards is encrypted using the session key and you know decrypted also using the session key. So whoever is looking at the network, you know, looking at everything that the client and the server is doing, what do they have? Well, they have the client random and the server random. But they will not be able to create the session key because they don't have the pre-master secret. Only the client and the servers know the pre-master secret. Even though they sent the pre-master secret over the network, it was encrypted using the public key. So that's it. It's pretty simple, right? So I have written all of these notes in, in this GitHub repository. I link the same um, in the description. So that's pretty much it for this video. In the next one, we will actually talk about how to actually make use of these SSL certificates and do something useful. All right. Thanks for watching. If you really find it useful, please leave a like.